2012. You're tuning into the Georgia Navy Show on iCannabisRadio.com. Tonight's host, of course, well, Georgia, because Amy's not here yet, but she should be here any minute. And your producer tonight is Kristen Custer. We'll have a little bit of news, and then we'll go right into it, because it, it is that time of the month. That well, it's time not being, that time of the month, actually. Yeah, it is. It's class Monday. Well, although, you know what's so funny about that? Guess who's listening, Warren? One of our good friends, MaxiPad. I don't even... I won't even go there. Max says what up. Okay. Well, cool. In terms of the news tonight, we're going to chat about a Denver lawyer losing her liability imp- insurance because of medical marijuana. We're going to talk about the DUID and CDPHE theft bill that continues through our legislature, but it is the last week. And finally, we'll talk about Connecticut passing medical marijuana over the weekend. Kind of, That's sort of, maybe. It, it, the buzz... The video's present? Uh-huh. You were fresh. Um, to begin with, a Denver lawyer loses her mal- medical mal- or her legal malpractice insurance. Local attorney Ann Tony was notified late last month that Hanover Insurance Group would no longer relu- renew her malpractice insurance. Despite the fact that Miss Tony reminds all of her clients that medical marijuana is against federal law and that medical marijuana consists of only 30% of her legal work, her insurance company is refusing to cover her firm with, medic- with legal malpractice. Um, she remains uncovered to this day, so about 30 days later, that not only covers cl- problems, obviously, with her caseload, but for those of you non-lawyers out there, you cannot hold a state license, um, or you, excuse me, you cannot hold a state contract without having medical marijuana or malpractice insurance. Anyway, Georgia, you might want to go check in the main room to make sure it's going if you don't have it going there. Additionally, the DUID bill and the state's move to steal money from the patients remains alive yet today. Even though we're in the last week of legislative session, the DUID bill has gone through appropriation and hit the House floor. It could any day. That would, for those of our listeners outside of Colorado, because most of us here are, are on top of this because it's a bad deal, it would cr- institute a nine nanogram whole blood per se standard in Colorado, which would basically mean a patient would have to choose between being a medical marijuana patient and driving, particularly those that are daily users. But anyway, it got through appropriations. It has to still go through the House. The good part is Wednesday's it. So... uh, Do we know what time the hearing is on Wednesday? No. And and that's part of the trick. Um, You know, they never let you know. There was supposed to be a hearing this afternoon. That didn't happen. That's what I thought at 1.30. Um, (laughs) And so... You know, rumors here, rumors there, but there's only, you know, two more days left. Wednesday's it, and there's a lot of stuff that needs to get through. Will there be testimony? Do you know? Okay. No. Um, and, and right now, I mean, the 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 other piece of, of legislation that is being kind of held off maybe until Wednesday. Well, wait, wait, because I mean, it's, so the listeners know that's also SB 12117, because SB 12117, those are the magic numbers, so you can Google in like Colorado legislature and then go bill search and go there, because that's the best we can do to try to figure out what's going on with that. Um, now, additionally, there's HB 121358, and that's boo. funding related to medical boo, marijuana. Boo. <laughs> and that would, you know, a, on a basic level, take $7.7 million from the medical marijuana program, meaning CDPHE, the Department of Health, and transfer that to the Department of Revenue for use in licensing. Um, $7.7 million would be stolen from the patient fund and used for licensing. Now, that's not just bad enough, but the particularly interesting part is of that, 93600 would go to the Department of Safety for expenses related to coordination of the medical marijuana data in the Colorado Crime Information Center. Um, and Sounds ominous. It's very ominous. Basically what that means is they're going to create a database that links the enforcement office with the... Uh, the whole list of patients, the registry. Well, and it basically is going to depend on the fine details because if it's a matter of creating an information system that allows the cops to confirm that somebody's a patient or not, that's one thing. But if it's something where a cop can troll down Colfax and run people's license plate numbers and have a red flag come up saying the person who's registered that vehicle is a medical marijuana patient, that is a completely different thing. And I have actually heard that it could go either way. Uh, just so you know, the door's unlocked. Oh, right. <laughs> uh, <but laughs> um, that that could go either way. 
um, you know, and, and we're going to see, and the, and the dirt is in the details. But uh, as George is saying, that all goes on Wednesday. and So that, that hearing is Wednesday, too. Is it starting well, in it the Senate? Well, it could be Tuesday or, or Wednesday. That, that, that came from the House, so that's in the opposite. So that's in the Senate at this point. Okay. And we will see, but keep your ears open. And that's HB 12, 1358. Again, HB 12, 1358. <laughs> And finally, before we get to some random chatter and as they pull out some cool glass, um, over the weekend, and yes, uh, you're hearing me right, over the weekend on Saturday, Connecticut approved medical marijuana in in a kind of, sort of, maybe fashion. (laughs) Um, Specifically on Saturday, the Connecticut State Senate approved medical marijuana, and Connecticut Governor Malloy, Malloy has pledged that he will sign the bill when it hits his desk. So that is a good thing. The bad thing is the actual piece of legislation, and I actually say that, but it has some good parts because it has some of the strongest protection for <laughs> patients I have ever seen. What are s- Excellent. What are, s- what are some of the protections? Well, it, it straight up says that um, a person can't be denied housing because they're a medical marijuana oh, patient. Oh, wow. That's it great. It says a person can't be denied professional licensing or uh, or um, benefits because of that, meaning a broad, encompassing array of things, everything from, um, you know, a doctor can't lose their medical mar- their their li- medical license because just because they're a medical marijuana patient, um, wow. on to you know people can't lose their local state funding because they're a medical marijuana patient. Or like patient. for example, the Boehner case mm-hmm. wouldn't happen in Connecticut. Correct. Um, because it, it shouldn't wouldn't threaten your license under this. So it has great protection there. Wow. But then it's like, I, I don't know how you, somebody wrote that part of it, which is very progressive. <laughs> a- and then basically it creates dispensaries, producers, patients, and caregivers. The licenses begin at 25 grand, a- and only the producers can grow, okay? But here's the weird part. Only dispensary owners can dispense. Um, and... and so the producers sell to the dispensary owners, which is kind of like here, okay? But the dispensary owners are required to be pharmacists. So how many pharmacists do you think <laughs> are going to be able to maintain their license yeah, to, to, to distribute Schedule 2, 3, 4, 5 drugs while they're simultaneously s- distributing Schedule 1 drugs? None, okay? Uh, I mean, the harsh reality <coughs> is they, they won't be able to. <coughs> So basically, this sets up a system where patients will have to get their medical marijuana from the black market, a- and then the because there's nobody else, right? Because the other thing is the patients and the caregivers aren't allowed to grow; only the producers are allowed to grow. So the patients can't grow for themselves, and it leaves this caregiver person is apparently a delivery boy. And so this has already been signed into action. Well, the governor hasn't signed it, but it has passed the House, the Senate, done deal. Saturday, it's a done deal, and the governor says he's going to sign it. Yeah. And so, I mean, mm-hmm. I- you know, figuratively, I- it's a great thing. I mean, it gets in the paper again. Look, another New England state passed medical marijuana. Um, like I said, it has some great protections for the patient, and it, it just, I-, I don't know if it's intentionally unworkable, meaning somebody who's like, I want to. Doesn't it feel like that, though? Doesn't it, it feel like it's intentional? It kind of, well, hope, Sometimes, though, they just. If you think about it, though, that. if you're a smart businessman and you're a pharmacist, and you're willing to sacrifice your ability to prescribe other medications mm-hmm. and open a medical marijuana center, and you're one of, say, 10 people to do so, you will be able to potentially make more revenue in that position than but you would as a pharmacist. But you're not a pharmacist. If you lose your license, therefore you can't yeah, sell medical see, marijuana. But I mean, if they become how long would you be allowed to be a pharmacist? So if they become a patient first, and then they're under that clause where they're licensed. It's fed. federal. That's right. Yeah, see, the yeah. issue is it's a federal a license to prescribe. And to deal with prescriptions. So, uh, I mean, um, yeah, it's a federal deal. They don't give a shit. And and no matter what what the state licensing says and how much protection they build into it, it won't matter. So, yes, you will have some brave ones and some out there ones that will do it to make a buck. But within six months to nine months, you know, the licensing board is going to catch up with them. They're going to lose their license. And And then it's a federal case. Well, and the thing is, it's akin to the prescription recommendation thing. You know, they didn't say <laughs> prescription because they knew if a doctor <coughs> prescribed it, they'd lose their ability to prescribe right. other drugs, and no doctor would do it. So, I mean, it's a weird back step in that regard. And, and I don't know whether it was just, you know, that sounded cool, so they did it, um, and then didn't think through how it'll really work, or whether it was that part of it's intentional. You're clearly going to have patience. Right. I don't understand the pharmacist piece, though. I mean, what, was, it, that, yeah, a, that, was that an really effort to sense. say, wow, this is really and truly a, a medicine? And, and, and we it's safer. 
right? Allegedly, because because you'd have some pharmacist person that is licensed and went to school and, and and handles it. And you know, as much as everybody hates the rules here in Colorado, uh, probably not stuff we should talk about it. But we will. I mean, my big fear was always that that they would restrict it or make it akin as pain in the ass as the application process is to it to be an employee in this state. They don't make you go to school for two years. Right. 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 Yeah. You know, and they do for other scheduled drugs. Hmm. Um, so, yeah. That's interesting. Is there any remedial action that can occur at this point legislatively to modify the bill? Oh, yeah. This is all legislation. So, un- unlike a constitutional amendment, this can be tweaked just like we've seen in 1284, 1043, right. and, and will be tweaked year after year after year. So, uh, you know, I guess you'll see patients. You'll probably see some brave pharmacists. And right. maybe before they lose their license, you'll see some, some regulation change, depending on... Right. How the operations look and come across to the general public. Hmm. It, it'll be also interesting. The patients in Connecticut would be able to shop in Maine, where there's reciprocity. Oh, nice. A, a, and allegedly, Vermont's going to tweak itself to fully and cleanly allow reciprocity in its new dispensaries that open up this July. New dis- Nudist, Nudist dispensaries. Nudist. No, we're not doing the, the Ooh, sex pot radio show. Interesting. Um, Ooh, no. <sighs> hey, Sorry. If, if, if Florida, <laughs> That's a very visceral image. <laughs> if, if, Florida, if Florida legalizes medical marijuana, Key West will have a nudist Oh, I am sure I, they I will. Oh, my gosh. You. Can you imagine what's going to happen? What's going to drop on uh, New Year's Eve? <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> um, oh, oh, Lord. Gosh, Lord. Where is uh, New Jersey right now on their legislation? Um, They're up to two. Well, okay. in terms of a lot, when we talked to Anne a couple weeks, weeks ago, ago three mm-hmm. weeks ago, yep, they had one, and since that time, they have gotten another. So we are up to two at this point in Jersey. Okay, and great. Just keeps kind of chugging, and then we'll see what happens. Obviously, we'll keep everybody updated here in November, and and how about out New in York, Washington in November, and. I, I'm not hearing New York's going through this legislative session, but certainly pressures pressures on. Right, Cuomo, right, so. right, right, right. That's interesting. <laughs> so do we need to pay some bills, or what the hell are we doing? Mm-hmm. Yep. We, do, we do need to pay some bills, um, and we'd like to thank our friends at Medical Marijuana in the Rockies. Warren, you want to say hi? thank you to your friends? Hey, Jerry. Jerry and Aaron um, are one of our favorite places up in Frisco. Medical Marijuana in the Rockies, it's your mountain source for meds, the best immature plants in the state, or clones, or actually maybe right now it doesn't really matter what we call them, but... Um, you can get on their website, www.mmrockies.com, for their ever-changing strain selection and their plant availability. Um, yeah, right up off I-70 in Frisco. And, you know, urge our listeners, as the weather gets nicer and it's easier to drive up there and get around and everything's pretty, you know, make a day of it. Go grab some lunch, go pick up some meds at Jerry's and check out something different up there. That's Medical Marijuana of the Rockies, mmrockies.com. We'll be right back. Let's face it, rules and regulations are complicated, especially in the field of medical marijuana. Let Medical Marijuana 101 help you get through the compliance process. We can also explain to you your employment requirements, your employees, and your business. But our work doesn't stop there. Our experience in cultivation ranges from the design of grow rooms to the diagnosis and resolution of grow problems. Visit us at www.medicalmarijuana101.com or call 303-388-7706. That's 303-388-7706. Are you a runner? Are you a runner who supports marijuana legalization? Run on Grass is a group of athletes actively seeking to change our marijuana laws. We speak the truth about cannabis, bringing the message through our feet to new ears. Check out runongrass.com to find out more about us, our events, and how to join up or how to sponsor a runner. If you're in the Denver area, please join us for runs or start a group in your area. Running not your thing? Any sport can do it on grass. Runongrass.com. Hi, Josh Stanley here from National Geographic's American Weed. I'm here with my brothers, and we've just recently put together a foundation in Colorado to allow for cancer patients and other patients of debilitating conditions to be able to get a hold of cannabis-based oil that's just about free of charge. I've just about had it with seeing sick patients suffer needlessly just because they can't afford the proper medication. That's what the Realm of Caring is going to change. Visit therealmofcaring.com. The website will be complete and up on 14. 
20 of 2012. But until then, please contact any of us Stanley Brothers directly through email. You can get us at gratefuljosh at hotmail.com. Now come on, Colorado. We need to take care of each other. Join the realm. That's realmofcaring.com. Thank you so much. Are you a medical marijuana patient or interested in finding out how to become one? Contact Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. Conveniently located on Hamden and Tamarack in the Whole Foods parking lot behind Proof of the Pudding. Mile High Wellness offers a wide variety of edibles, hashes, and some of Colorado's top strains. Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. 3525 South Tamarack, Suite 110, on the corner of Hamden and Tamarack. 720-382-8516. Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. The law offices of Vets and Maintenance Mats provide criminal defense, medical marijuana defense, and advice about setting up and running medical marijuana centers, optional premises, cultivation operations, and infused product manufacturing businesses throughout Colorado. With offices in Denver and Aspen, we can offer assistance throughout the entire state of Colorado. Give us a call at 303-831-8188. That's 303-831-8188. Or visit us online at warrenetson.com. California's Attorney General has determined that the Repeal Cannabis Prohibition Act will save hundreds of millions of dollars from our overburdened justice system while creating hundreds of millions in new tax revenues from new sustainable jobs and industries that are friendly to our environment. But we can't do it without your help. We are seeking your donations to get on the ballot. Please go to repealcannabisprohibition.org to learn more about how you can help. It's time to end the war on cannabis and hemp in California. It's time to end the madness. Paid for by Sensible California's Incorporated. Let's face it, rules and regulations are complicated, especially in the field of medical marijuana. Let Medical Marijuana 101 help you get through the compliance process. We can also explain to you your employment requirements, your employees, and your business. But our work doesn't stop there. Our experience in cultivation ranges from the design of grow rooms to the diagnosis and resolution of grow problems. Visit us at www.medicalmarijuana101.com or call 303 303- 388-7706. That's 303-388-7706. Hi, I'm Rick Cusick from High Times Magazine, and you're listening to iCannabis Radio. Welcome back, welcome back. You're listening to The Cure with Georgia and Amy. It's so cute to hear Rick's intro. <laughs> He's such a nice guy. <laughs> I love it. Um, before we get to Glass Monday... Um, I want to talk a little bit about the Colorado Patients at a Time event yesterday. Um, this has been the third? Third. Yeah. That was the third. The third event that awarded grants to patients um, to receive their uh, doctor's evaluations and then um, to cover the red card registry fee. With the state. The medical marijuana state registry fee. Um, yesterday, 15 uh, patients were awarded grants. That puts us over 50. It's in, in since the beginning of the year. Yeah. Since the beginning of the year, over 50 people have uh, have benefited from generous donations from lots and lots of organizations and people. And um, yesterday, our event at Jake's, and we'd like to thank thank Jake's at 3800 Walnut Street for hosting our event for us, um, which was a pre Mother's Day brunch. Uh, there was lots of food. The bacon. <laughs> You're a bacon fan, huh? This vegetarian loves some bacon. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, and it actually was. It was like thick cut paper peppercorn. Oh, it was really that's good. That's the best yeah. kind. It, it oh. was good. Um, they, they put out a good brunch for us. And then there was all sorts of... What was cool was it was, you know, not a traditional cannabis event. And I hate to say it that way, but it wasn't. I mean... I think that's good, it though. It was kid friendly. Right. And there was all sorts of kid stuff. From sand art sculptures to a caricature guy to a face painter to a spray paint guy to some glass blowers that were making kids marbles and mushrooms and other things. Um, we had a masseuse and then we had a variety of different prizes given away, but it was it was pretty cool. And there was lots and lots of kids there, like like thirty plus through the day. It was it was really fantastic and people stayed. They had a great time. People showed up at ten and they left after two and and it was really wonderful. So we would like to thank the sponsors, um, in dispensary in the realm of caring, um, MMD of Colorado, um, Rabbit Hole, uh, Glass Blowers, um, Buckaroos, um, Noda Urban Garden Supply, Green Thumb Garden Supply, um, had they, they Yeah, I forgot. I didn't even mention the kids yeah. planting all sorts of seeds. Yeah. yeah. There had to be a hundred of those cups went out. Oh, it was it was just fantastic. It was it was so cool. Um, weed pimps gave away things. Ganja girl, um, 
Edson Maiden and Matt. Vapor Brothers. The Vapor Brothers. Um, thank you guys again for, for donating another vaporizer. What a, what a fantastic... Um, uh, Lynette won it. Lynette won the vaporizer. Um, it was fantastic. Vapor Brothers, I'll send you a picture. I got it. Um, the other thing is that this event... Um, not only paid for um, the minimal costs of, of holding the event, but but actually raised money for the next. Yeah, for the first time ever, we covered the 17, 15 scholarships and actually raised money yesterday. So we can't thank the Colorado Patients Out of Time board members enough for pulling that off. So that got done and, and will allow us to have another one next time. And then we had, yeah, so folks know for the next one, too, they're great speakers last night or yesterday, just like before. Moms for Marijuana yesterday. Yep. Christy Wheeler was in attendance. Mm-hmm. Thank Heidi you, Christy. Hamm. Heidi, Heidi st- spoke about the Patients Out of Time Conference in Arizona and, and let us know how that was. Um, Chaz spoke, spoke a bunch, and, and it, was, it was really cool. I, I want to I put a, a shout-out, though. I think it's really important. I think one of the reasons why why this, this Colorado Patients Out of Time project is so wonderful is that it gives the opportunity for um, the medical marijuana industry to actually help pay for um, and some some patient needs um, at the point in time that the doctor center relationship was severed understandably so there wasn't really an opportunity for centers to be able to financially help patients and this is a great way to do this this is a um, uh, nonprofit organization um, organiz- uh, organizations can make a donation to to the national patients out of time, um, and it's and it's a tax deduction, and, and all the money for from Colorado donors goes directly to the Colorado project. So please visit the website um, coloradopot.org, Colorado patients out of time dot org, and and please make a donation. Um, we'd really appreciate it. What was your favorite part about the event? Um, you know what? I think watching the kids aside from the bacon, I love the bacon. <laughs> I think watching the kids um, mesmerized by the glass blowing was just fantastic. I mean, <laughs> at the very beginning, when the glass blowers got set up, um, I mean these kids' eyes were humongous. <laughs> Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's true. That's right. Um, you know, and, and um, Zach got a pretty nasty burn um, on his hand. That's because he was drunk the other night. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. tattletale. All, all, the kids, all the kids were so shocked. Zach wasn't even faced. Like, he, he put on the, the fire retardant um, glove and was like, yeah, that's just irritating my burn. But they were like, whoa, I think they will not play with torches. <laughs> 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 I guess we learned that. Uh, but that was my favorite. What was your favorite part? Uh, well, I got there after everyone had kind of left, obviously. <laughs> I, I worked all weekend, <laughs> so I didn't really have a break. But my favorite part was, you know, seeing Deborah. Like, she's just so happy and really... I think in a comfortable space and feeling really good that she can benefit other people, other individuals, which is, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, people won't remember what you said or what you did, but they do remember how you made them feel. And if you can change their life, you know, it really is enriching. So I think she definitely, I don't know, she's just in a great mood. Her whole energy was amazing. She had some champagne too. Yeah, she had a little, she had a little bit of champagne. There was a little bit going on. (laughs) <laughs> so yeah, thank you so much. Um, and and I, I think the the teasing's got to stop. I mean, we've been talking about Glass Monday for a while, <laughs> and everyone's anxious to talk to you guys. I mean, I don't know why, but they possibly are. because they are the Cannabis Cup winners. Winners, we love winners. winners. Do you want to? So we are we are going to do. Yeah, yeah, we're going to do a little bit of moving. Ready, set, move. <laughs> Chinese fire drill, so right now. And then Red light. That means you get one's gonna, one's gonna <laughs> You guys can talk so they're not. Can you hear me? Dead air. I can hear you now. All right, so what did you guys bring for us today? Well, we brought some rabbit hole stuff. Yeah, we did bring some rabbit hole stuff since they were at Yale's event. And we also we brought the uh, piece that we won the cup with. Can I touch that? No. Huh. You both said that. <laughs> okay. I don't even want to. I've, I've actually, that's the first time. That's the first time I've ever gotten a no from you guys. That is a Scott um, Perry Norton work of art. I'd is that on camera? Uh, it will be. Is you, uh, they, they don't have malpractice insurance for head shops either. <laughs> I don't even know. I mean, what exactly do you call that? Awesome. <laughs> call it awesome. I call it Dichro Madness Awesomeness by Sky Perry Norton. 
and that's a rabbit hole productions piece. Heck no, no, this is by no. uh, Sky. Sky, Sky. Sky. He is, hell no. <laughs> <he's> <laughs> no this Sky is an uh, old school artist, specializes in uh, using a lot of dichro in his wag work, and he, he pulls a lot of his own color, and it's in this particular piece has just... So when uh, you say wag work, what does that mean? Um... Point at it, Paul. Point at it. <laughs> <laughs> but don't touch it. Oh, Just point oh it. I can touch funny. it. He won't let George touch it, and then he goes and grabs it like... Uh-huh. <laughs> all, that, all that stuff on yeah. the top there. All the little cutback, so enforced pretty. sawtooth looking lines. So basically, um, kind of more of the ornamental pieces. Oh yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. The more decorative stuff that uh, technically, like it's called wig wag. Yeah. Also, a lot of it's referred so, to uh, as reversals and stuff like that. That's what the terminology means. Yeah. Wag is wig wag. Right. Okay, it's it's, gotcha. it's like skateboard tricks. So the glass blowers got to choose all their own names when they created <laughs> all this stuff. <laughs> Obviously, by the name slime, I would think uh, like you guys would pick it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, 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 there's there's kids that still call wig wags wiggity woos. Wiggity woos. Yeah, that's like a Canadian. Yeah, and the dicro that he was talking about. Was some of these that you see inside all the marbles, the real sparkly. Right. Yeah, looking it's, little section. It's a uh, actually dichroic film, the same as the space shuttle had on its tiles. That Whoa, you can smoke so the space that's shuttle. That's some NASA shit. You, you can buy NASA sure. glass. Yeah. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> that's right. It comes, it comes from Kennedy Space it comes Center. From the Kennedy no. Space Center. So you guys bought this piece for a reason, though. <laughs> because that was the highlighted showcase center piece that uh, helped our booth to uh, win best class. And this is the piece that is the best class. Best class. <laughs> and the best class awesome. in the High Times Denver Cannabis Cup that Med- occurred. Medical Cup, yeah. A couple Just of a weeks, weeks ago. ago, which we yeah. had a, which we had a. Uh, this says winner. Winner. Oh, yeah, it does say winner. Winner, winning. <laughs> so, yep. With this piece sells or goes home, that goes to Sky's house. That's he, awesome. It's the Cannabis Cup trophy. And Yay, got a Sky. <laughs> we've got a couple of replacements to go to in each one of the stores. So is he a local or he's did in Fort Collins? Oh so he's, wow, he's awesome! A Col- he's a Colorado superstar in his own right. And uh, if anybody wants to check out his his work, uh, please visit glasspipes.org forward slash Sky Perry Norton. And there's a lot of examples. I mean, this is just one of a great many masterpieces that he's uh, made himself and been part of in collaborative works. Is So for if someone wants to buy the top glass in Colorado that won the Cannabis Cup, what kind of price are they looking at? What's that going for? I it's think a that tag on there says 2800 Yep. Woo, Which I think is that's actually, a bargain. Yeah, that's really oh, definitely. stupid cheap for that quality of a piece. But uh, then again, Colorado, it's, you know, artists here work cheap because they want to move their work, you know. That's and, and there's a lot of competition, that, too. Exactly. Right? There's yeah. a lot of very heady competition here, so... Now, is this really a piece that you would use, or is this a piece I know you people who would use this. They're you crazy. would have to be a very would I use this? No, this gentle, would sit, delicate person. Yeah. This would sit sitting in a room full of pillows. Yeah. <laughs> you, know? Know? you know, I mean, this is definitely the piece that would end up with a really high-end collector. Right. And you have your two different high-end collectors. There's the guys like me that collect a lot of stuff and only smoke out of maybe half of it, if that. Then you've got some guys like, uh, I know a guy back in Texas that has one of the biggest collections I've ever seen. And he smokes out of every single piece. Wow. No matter what. Is, is there a value loss when you start using a piece? Well, here's the thing with it is it's only recently being appreciated as an art. Yeah. I mean, you have a Dale Chihuly bowl from Seattle, let's say, that is this big, is made by his apprentice, and costs $40,000. Right, right. This is made by one of the top, you know, probably the probably one of the best guys at working dichro on the planet and incorporating it into glass. Um, plus, I mean, it, you can see the piece is very well constructed. It's symmetrical. It stands exactly oh, yeah. up and down. And it's got a ton of attachments, which every one of these pieces, that's welded on individually. And every time he does that, he faces the the daunting question of, 
will this color, if I place it on this spot, is it too close to another weld or anything else to create a stress point and have this piece just collapse on me? Right, right. right. So every one of these that makes it out of the kiln successfully is an accomplishment in itself because the colors that he's using are are non-traditional. A lot of them are untested, especially in a si- piece with the size and severity of stress points is something like this. When you say untested, what do you mean by that? Like well, he's just developing them for the first time or in 1995 there was like 12 colors. Uh, no, yeah, we talked about this and it's kind of almost exponentially risen every single exactly. year. Exactly. And and some of them react differently because of the metals and the composition right. of each one of the colors. So, so does Sky does Sky think this through? Like, has he <laughs> completely and utterly like determined what it's going to look like, or does he do some? Okay, so here's where I am now. I'm going to add a couple pieces here and a couple pieces there. Wha- right. Well, everything requires balance, and uh, most artists that you see their work, they'll always be balanced. But the biggest thing that is one of the heady artists' dilemmas is when to say it's enough. When to stop? Exactly. <laughs> well, and, and when I mean, is it a masterpiece? And when when can I walk away from it and feel confident that it's what I want to produce and show as representative of me as an artist? Is what I would I would say. I think this thing is stunning. You know, I just got a message from our friend Max, who um, not only wants to buy it but wants to smoke out of it. <laughs> Max, so Max. I it. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> better Would make that the be Dean's list. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Max isn't going to buy it. <laughs> he, wants to. he wants to buy it. He wants to buy it. He wants to buy it. I just think it's amazing. I mean, you can, I, I, if I were allowed to touch it and to move it, um, which I will, I mean, this is, uh, this is the first time I've ever been told no, I will not, I will not touch. But, I mean, it's, there's so many different facets to it. And I so think that was the key. Touch it. Oh. Thank you. I mean, just look. Look, it's just—it's amazing. Oh my gosh, it's even more beautiful from this angle. Yeah. Um, I—I I mean, there's pieces down here that are radically different from the pieces up here, um, and then this this color scheme is pulled. The wigwag is pulled. Thank you. Yeah, there's like eight <laughs> different sections in that little tiny section right there. That little. Are you talking about the first? Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. Butterfingers. That's why we're not going to touch it. Oh, my God. Winner. Winner. <laughs> winner. It's okay. You're still a winner even if you break it. But No, we're not going to break it. Take <laughs> that away from that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that you wasn't really the fault. Fo- that wasn't really the problem. This is why we cannot have nice things. <laughs> this, is why, yeah, this is why we cannot have nice <laughs> right, things. Right. Yep, this I used is to why say that to Pentamonas Verdes all the time. People just admire this for. Th- see, the cool thing about it is, is that this is a piece of history for the artist as well as, you know, this is like a Picasso for the customer after too. his tenth or fifteenth year or whatever. Or like painting. right at the blue period. So if you exactly. bought a Picasso, his first blue period, right. you're doing pretty well. There you go. Um, I just as like an observer and as a participant, in kind of this revolution that's happening. Do you think there will ever be a moment where this is recognized as an art form equal to that of Chihuly or other renowned glass artists? It's I would I would call this the most difficult art on the planet. People are like making the, me the, very the nervous. Hard. <laughs> yes, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. This guy's like, piece away now. <laughs> my, my mom Jean is kicking in. Go ahead and continue. Yeah, you guys have got my train of thought. <laughs> Focused on this piece. Well, I'm just thinking, because if you, you, you referenced Jehuli earlier and buying a piece by his assistant for 40K, right? Yeah. But you will never use that piece of glass. You yeah, will it's, never it's say, a, I'm no. going to serve salad to my dinner party tonight, my Jehuli glass. You're not going to do it, but this you would use. So it almost has an added degree of difficulty to it. It is 100% functional and functions well. Right, uh, and it's equally, if not more, beautiful than those pieces uh, that are so simple. That's right. Exactly. Oh. That's right. Uh, that's, that's the the cool thing about it is is that next time he makes it, it will not be the same color. Right. It will right. not be the same anything. Right. Well, that's one of the things that I think is so appealing. I mean, you... you I mean, every piece is is radically different, even if it looks similar. The colors are different, and, and the weld points are different. Mm-hmm. Every yeah, like this piece is not symmetrical. I mean, a machine did not make this. A man right. made that. Right. A human being, 
a stocky little human being with big <laughs> 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 and, an, and an amazing talent. And exactly. an amazing talent. Oh, yeah, there you go. I'm it's sure beautiful. Congratulations, yeah. you guys. Congratulations, Sky. Um, you guys are winners. Yep. And we'll, <laughs> we'll, we we'll put that in the light booth last and kind of go over a couple of things with this piece. And we'll go over uh, some of these rabbit holes next. Is that cool with you? Yeah. Why don't we take a little breaky break and uh, make a few dollars? Uh, we'd like to thank our dear friends at Noto Urban Garden Supply who also participated in the Patients at a Time events this weekend. Thank you so much to Levi. Noto Urban Garden Supply is located at 1330 27th Street. That's in between Walnut and Larimer on 27th in downtown Denver, four and a half blocks northeast of Coors Field, right by, oh, I don't know, a little place called MMD of Colorado and, and now Mad next Hatter. neighbor's <laughs> night Mad Hatter Smoke Shop. Um, Taking over the neighborhood. I know. We have a heck of a block. Um, Noda Urban Garden Supply is your source for all your hydro gardening needs, whether you are a commercial gardener or a hobby gardener. Go visit our friend Levi. Make sure you tell him that you heard about his store on iCannabis Radio and The Cure with Georgia and Amy, and he'll be happy to help you out. Right now, just so you guys know, they have seedlings available, all kinds of herbs and vegetables. and um, so, so do your shopping at Noda Urban Garden Supply, 1330 27th Street. We'll be right back. The Law Offices of Vets and Maintenance Mats provide criminal defense, medical marijuana defense, and advice about setting up and running medical marijuana centers, optional premises, cultivation operations, and infused product manufacturing businesses throughout Colorado. With offices in Denver and Aspen, we can offer assistance throughout the entire state of Colorado. Give us a call at 303-831-8188. That's 303-831-8188. Or visit us online at warrenetson.com. Hi, Josh. Josh Stanley here from National Geographic's American Weed. I'm here with my brothers, and we've just recently put together a foundation in Colorado to allow for cancer patients and other patients of debilitating conditions to be able to get a hold of cannabis-based oil that's just about free of charge. I've just about had it with seeing sick patients suffer needlessly just because they can't afford the proper medication. That's what the Realm of Caring is going to change. Visit therealmofcaring.com. The website will be complete and up on 420 of 2012. But until then, please contact any of us Stanley Brothers directly through email. You can get us at gratefuljosh at hotmail.com. Now come on, Colorado. We need to take care of each other. Join the realm. That's realmofcaring.com. Thank you so much. Are you a runner? Are you a runner who supports marijuana legalization? Run on Grass is a group of athletes actively seeking to change our marijuana laws. We speak the truth about cannabis, bringing the message through our feet to new ears. Check out runongrass.com to find out more about us, our events, and how to join up or how to sponsor a runner. If you're in the Denver area, please join us for runs or start a group in your area. Running not your thing? Any sport can do it. On Grass. Runongrass.com. Let's face it, rules and regulations are complicated, especially in the field of medical marijuana. Let Medical Marijuana 101 help you get through the compliance process. We can also explain to you your employment requirements, your employees, and your business. But our work doesn't stop there. Our experience in cultivation ranges from the design of grow rooms to the diagnosis and resolution of grow problems. Visit us at www.medicalmarijuana101.com or call 303-388-7706. That's 303-388-7706. I'm Gary Johnson, and you're listening to iCannabis Radio, and I want to say, talk it up, Colorado. Welcome back, welcome back. (laughs) I love that Gary Johnson. (laughs) He's got a great radio voice. He's like, ah, I want to say. He gets all in it. Like, he's all about it. Maybe politicians have a second career as radio people. Maybe politicians' a first career is actually... Doing their job. Ma- well, no. <laughs> no, no, no. That would be elected officials. Politicians are a totally different thing. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> Before we get started with some cool things, we'd like to say hi to Peggy. Hey, Peggy. Peggy. <laughs> <laughs> this is Peggy. You're making it sound like one of my Italian aunts. <laughs> when you say it like that. Is your mom Italian? No. That was no. my best. Irish lady. That was my best. It's from the Capital One commercials. When the they little Russian like, <laughs> <the> guy <laughs> up in the Arctic, he's like, "Hey, do DC's is pain." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Peggy, I want you to know I'm going to be hitting you up uh, to do some work. I will call you soon. But anyway. And I'll see you Wednesday, Mom. Oh, look at that! <laughs> All right, Mad Hatter boys, what you got for us? Cool stuff. 
no <laughs> doubt, right? <laughs> and stuff that we can touch that we aren't going to... Do I need to pan down on this camera? We roll? love when you touch the bit. stuff. <laughs> touch the stuff. Peggy, he's talking about the glass. <laughs> Sometimes. Oh, my mom raised me. She knows. I'm just saying. <coughs> I had to explain that to someone the other day, too. I was like, you know, I'm the black sheep, but uh, they're <laughs> cool with it now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was 13, 14, 15, not so cool with it. Now I'm 20, almost about to be 28. They're cool with it now. Wow, you're getting old. I know, dude. My birthday's coming up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. We know what you should have. What is that? The $2,800 piece uh-huh. that I would never use and I would get nervous about? I wouldn't be able to sleep. Like, something's <laughs> going to break that. Yeah, is like my heating consistent throughout my house? <laughs> <laughs> there are rats somewhere. It, so it's okay. Yeah, it's random breezes. <laughs> yeah, then it's fine to break it. Well, then she won't be as nervous because she <laughs> didn't spend the money. Uh, renter's insurance. Would there you go. <laughs> Actually, I do have renter's insurance. You'd so. have to have it be a writer on your renter's insurance. We mm. are stoners. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> 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 so all my landlords know this is what I do. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so what do you got? What are you showing us? All right. That we can't see. About? Yeah, can you show us first and no. then? No. No. Okay. Yes. We'll start out with this one. Oh, oh. that's like Derek's piece. That I slime, like that Sherlock. one better. Th- he's going to be jealous slime. now. Slime. Yeah, saxophone style. That is that amazing. Is so cool. Okay, now show Some our viewers or that, listeners. Uh, whoa. 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 Don't touch it. Okay. You. Paul. It, it's mine anyway. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So Here's beautiful. Here's another one on black tubing that has these slime dots. So why don't you why don't you explain slime. what the slime is? Slime is a color, and uh, I love the slime. Yeah, it's a new color that you said was really really big at the Big or Big this year, right? Is that what it's called? Yeah, it's something that people have discovered. And, uh, this is actually like a blowing technique on these, so really it stretches it out and makes really cool like bubbles and patterns. Nice in the, in the slime. I Chris, really do you like the slime. I do. I do too. It well. It's great. It's like Slimer Does it in go Ghostbusters. Dark? No, but nope. it looks like a shit. Yeah. yeah. Now, that would be really cool if they could blow something that would then glow in the dark. And this is oh, a custom-made color. Is it specific to one artist? Uh, no, it's uh, it's a Troutman color, isn't it? I guess. I'm pretty sure it's uh, made by Paul Troutman, who's one of the big uh, color producers uh, okay. in the industry. Gotcha. Um, old school player. And he... Uh, like old, school player player new school. <laughs> like old school player, new school. Old school player, new school fool. <laughs> Sorry. But, uh, guess, man. <laughs> it's a color that's been gaining a lot of popularity. We've I seen, especially it. in the last few yeah. months. I want slime and pink. I really like the juxtaposition of the really light and bright green with the black. Yeah. yeah. This one's it, got the, the contrast is great. Were you surprised that I just used the word juxtaposition? I loved it. People, loved it. the words that come out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> on many smart. different levels. Just, <laughs> just because you read an urban graffiti magazine. <laughs> 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 it's actually art history. AP art history. Scored a four on the exam. So. All right. Yeah, you know what? Show occasionally I pick up a juxtaposed magazine, show too. That one again. Whoa. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Again. 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 Again and again. That one is a dope one. And these are all obviously from the same artist. They're the same uh, style. These are from Oh, nice. The glass blowing nice. At the, uh, patients had time of it. Right. Where my son has we, an original. We, <laughs> which I would have been at, but I thought it was the Mother's Day patients out of time. I'm so next weekend when I'm out of town. No, I told you about it when we went to lunch and you said, I sleep all day on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, I do sleep all day on Sunday. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Remember the conversation that we had? Yeah. <laughs> I don't sleep, there, I sleep all day on Sunday. I need to get on that schedule, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Enviable. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Look at this. Pretty yeah, donut mouthpiece. What's a donut? Oh, <laughs> donut. <laughs> not perverted at all. It's um, beautiful. <laughs> this is a what? It, what is what is something with the vulva um, <laughs> cost? <laughs> Uh, if it, if hundreds it, if of it, an hour. If it's <laughs> <laughs> okay, just for the record, Georgia said that and I didn't. So 
<laughs> for once. Note it. <laughs> Note it. <laughs> Note it. <laughs> I mean, this is just amazing. This is just amazing. Yeah, it's really nice how they stacked like the slime sections on top of the little wigwag so sections down below. Yeah, did they actually two reversals there? Did they have to blow? Obviously, they had to blow those pieces separately. So, is that actually three different pieces that were uh, created? That was actually four different pieces. Yeah. Uh, Where's the fourth? You, this one is one. This uh, slime piece right here. Yeah. This okay. is two separate ones right it here. Is? Put oh, together really? with the dark colors touching each other. Huh. And that's a, another section. How do you how do you do this though? How do you do the donut? You would take. <laughs> you, you <would laughs> There's take many different positions and ways <laughs> you can do the donut. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> sorry, I couldn't help it. But how she, do you how do you blow how do you blow the donut though? Uh, yeah, where do you blow the donut? There's a couple books you can buy, <laughs> yeah. and I have a couple I can Take lend you. <laughs> 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 I just, I, there's so many things that I can do with that that I just... <laughs> That's what she said. Starting with what? I don't really know. I just, uh, I want to be as cool as Amy. <laughs> I don't really know. She wants to put it to her mouth first and try it out. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's, like, it's, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a bubble wand. It's <laughs> well, an expensive well, bubble wand, yeah. but I guess you could. <laughs> you might want to stick to the dollar store for those ones. Uh, <laughs> show this. this is gorgeous. This is, I think, someone should go to. Th is this at the Walnut Street store? Uh, that one's from Colfax. Okay, so someone needs to go to the Colfax store tomorrow <coughs> and buy it. So I, I have a little idea, and I'm going to just say idea. it now because I, I brainstormed it with Georgia earlier. Um, you guys have upcoming in the next issue of Kush. There's going to be a pictorial review of Rabbit Hole. And they mm -hmm. were just at the Patients Out of Time event as well. And because you two are located next to each other, maybe after the next issue comes out, you two could coordinate on an event and cross-promote and promote for Rabbit Hole. And it, that would be like a really big pounded out moment for both MMD and Mad Hatters. And you could have a lot of people come over, maybe even give Casamans to get, like if you have a receipt from either store, have them hook you up with a drink, drink discount. Maybe Kush could donate a hundred free T-shirts to the cause, or. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're throwing out ideas me, here. Do, do, I, do. I would love to if we had T-shirts. I think I might have a few that I could donate. Laura Latham, of all people, has them, well, so I'll have to track those down. I like the Kush <laughs> Wars one. New co-host of Overgrowth. The what right? one? Of what? Kush Wars. Kush Wars. Oh, nice. Laura, yeah. That nice. was a Daily Bud shirt. Ooh, I'll have to Google that, see if I can get that made again. Because all, <laughs> all of this means I have to do it. <laughs> so I have to plan it out. <laughs> so one of the things that, that we talked about with Rabbit Hole yesterday was, um, along those same lines, is having them doing a glass blowing demonstration um, as it gets warmer in the parking lot of our stores. We have parking um, lot? Well, we have sort a place of. where you're allowed to park. You have a, you <laughs> have so a gravel a alleyway. In the, yeah. In the shop, so. You could have it have during that yellow hole. no parking area that I always park in. Mm -hmm. That's where we Because I'm special. <laughs> I was like, yellow is my favorite color. This is where I'm supposed to park. I like that one. Okay, what is this one? They're all holes. General Custer speaks up. I like that one. All right, tell us a little bit about this one. Well, uh, these are all different bowls with different uh, attachments and slime. And can, black. I, can I tell you my struggle? Tell us. I really you struggle. Yeah. She struggles with the horns. I do. I already knew that. Yeah. Before she even said it. They're easy yeah. to grab. <laughs> is, that, is that the purpose or they're just, they they're just really neat? Pretty. And they look cool. Look, you need to make some. Look how cool this one is. This one right here is Jetsons. <laughs> Jetsons. Love that. I mean, no doubt I th I'm, a, I'm appreciative oh. of, of what it looks like and, and those kinds of things. I just don't get why. To me, this looks you dangerous. See, you want it it's to be dangerous. more feminine and you want, like, curved and soft lines and stuff like that. But I, I, out of your this customer base. This one's got buttons on it. <laughs> <laughs> this one's got buttons. It's like a dress. Uh, look, it's like a little dress up okay. here. Oh, wow, that's she just totally <laughs> <laughs> oh, my no, point. Look, go like this and it's flowers. Look at Aww. that. It's in the flower pot. I love this. You should buy it. Knew it. You should buy it. Compralo. <laughs> <laughs> it's $129. Yeah, not bad for all that I work. think that's it's worth beautiful. it. And it, then you can say of a slime piece from Rabbit Hole. Uh -huh. I love awesome. slime. I just yeah, love that that's their name because 
automatically evokes that image of Alice in Wonderland and opening the mind to like this amazing world of possibility. Oh yeah. <laughs> and you just say Oh, and Mad Hatter. And the rule. Oh, the light bulb, you can call it. And insider info, the rabbit hole guys do have the same girl working on a logo for them that designed our Mad Hatter. Oh, so perfect. Oh, I was thinking about a commercial. That's different. <laughs> The perks of Mad Hatter. The perks Some, of Mad Hatter. Sometimes you get inside information <laughs> that doesn't make sense. <laughs> the perks of Mad Hatter. <laughs> this is really cool. It's the best commercial ever. This one's really cool because it's the little magic slug with his little magic eyeballs crawling around. <laughs> that looks like Did something. You throw that in there. That looks like no, something nice. that should. <laughs> this, this one that John's about to show looks like something that could swim. Or oh. grow little legs. That's that's yeah, Darwin. I have a that's Darwin. The toilet. So it's the missing link, <laughs> is what you're saying. <laughs> oh, look at that. That's so awesome. It's, a, it's, a, it's looking at you. We need him to make a black one that matches it, so that way there's like the good and evil one. <laughs> the angel and the devil. The angel and the slug devil. Slug spy versus <laughs> slug spy. The, the <laughs> slowest bombing in the earth. <laughs> Oh, this is adorable. Isn't it cool? See? It's little eyes, a little antenna, and its little mouth right there, and then it's, those oh my gosh. I think those are its eyes on stalks with its little nose. No, those it's are like little eyes. No. Yes, and that's the mouth. The no. eyes are on top. No, they're oh, yeah. not. Uh-huh. Let her have her own little Alice in Wonderland yeah, that's moment, what I was about to okay? Say, those could be the eyes for her. And those could be the eyes for you guys. But no. really, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> not you're all entitled to your wrong opinions. <laughs> 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 the species eyes are on top. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? I um, I want to know how likely it is that you're going to break off one of the horns. Me? In I'm general, not break one they are surprisingly sturdy and well made and put on there. Um, so you see horns on a lot of pieces because it's an extra little thing you can do to give it, you know, more character and more depth. So if you if you see this, Georgia. Like a good constructed piece will be constructed to the point where it's balanced. Mm-hmm. So it's not likely it's going to tip over and fracture one of those. If you drop it, uh, like you're standing and you drop it, yeah, it might happen. Oh and yeah, but then the whole thing could shatter. Right. right. Yeah, don't drop it. But out of all the pieces on this bowl, this is the most easy to repair, correct? If you wanted to, if you were yeah, I'd say so. that and, and generally to the piece. what I see on pieces with spikes that have been damaged is usually it's just the tip is Yeah, chipped. this little part, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I mean, especially if you know a glass blower, they can fix it and make it not look chipped. One of the cool things about a lot of the glass we carry being made here in Colorado, we can get it fixed by the guy who made it. Right, right. So That's kind of cool. You can stretch it out and you'll never even know. So, so th- I mean, this is a beautiful piece. It is not inexpensive. It retails for $270. Um, it's stu- I, I mean, e- feeling it. I mean, it has some weight to it. It's a, it's a significant piece. It's not a thin glass piece yeah. that you spend ten dollars on. But why is it, aside from from a collector standpoint, should someone buy something like this versus a twenty dollar throwaway piece? Well, one of the big things, especially on a piece like that or like these others that we have from them, a lot of it is stimming into that color of slime. Mm-hmm. That's going to reflect in the price of the piece itself. <laughs> Think of a glass rod. It's going to be, what, about a foot long, about the thickness of a pen or pencil, just solid glass. And they've got to turn it into this. Wow, yeah. So when you see traditionally lesser expensive pieces like a production spoon or something like that, like you're generally used to seeing in the 20 to 50 or even up to $100 range, they're starting with a clear rod that's already open and hollow. Um, and then they're melting just strands of color, which the, they'll take, like, uh, the pin or pencil long thing, stretch it out super thin, so that way, of course, it makes more, and they mm-hmm. go further with it, and then just make some squiggly lines on the inside, close it up, and shape it like a pipe. So the materials involved are a lot less, whereas, you know, like I said, something like that, you're having to create and make off of a solid stick something open that they can then morph and form and actually blow into to shape it. So that's where your slime pieces, and right now slime is the most expensive color on the market, <laughs> being so it's new beautiful. and so popular. Yeah. Right, right. And so that's definitely going to reflect in it. Um, you know, like we were looking at the sky piece earlier with Dicro, I remember when I first got into pipes, you know, when I was you know, around 17, 18 years old, at that point, Dicro was the most expensive because that was the well, coolest, la- latest, la- greatest. Dicro is the 
with like slime with dichro under it and stuff like that. Is Interesting. What's, like the real hot stuff right now. It's like 130 bucks, 140 bucks a pound. Wow. Wow. When, when you tell that to a customer, they're like, "Was well, this one twice as much as this one?" Wow. You and guys must have a lot of patience. <laughs> that's the thing is, it it requires a lot of education and explanation. So, and and that's why we enjoy doing what we do because we're really into the glass. Like we right, love it. Like, right. 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 I mean. John's in the store every single day. You know, he's allowed to have days off, you know, and they, he's always there because he loves it. You know, when, when he does take a day off, he goes and hangs out in a glass blue. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's all just part of it because it's, you know, to some people it's just a pipe that you're going to smoke your stuff out of. To other right. people, it's a lifestyle. Right. You know, I mean, some of us have been collecting for many, many years, and you know, it's. You know, I compared a lot to you know collecting baseball cards and stuff back in the day. You know, you're always chasing that special one. You know, but with glass pipes, a lot of times you don't know what that special one is. But I, I feel like it's analogous to collecting art as well. Mm-hmm. Like if yeah, you take, exactly. like this is really cheap in comparison to other art. But right. well, <laughs> no, actually, so there's um, a renowned collection, the Alfred Barnes collection, and he started collecting all of this progressive art like Manet's and all this pointillism stuff, modern art before it was popular and people were like, why do you like this? This shit is like, it's stupid Weird. no mm-hmm. one gets it, we don't like it it is worth like 300 billion right now and that's the thing is like, yeah right now maybe people don't know yeah. but eventually it could progress to that point especially with the pieces such as Sky's piece where it, that valuation does increase so I think it's just Increasing that awareness yeah. about what you're doing. Yeah. It's like owning an original Alex Gray that no one appreciated exactly. ten years ago, and it's like perfect. That's a oof. great analogy. Yeah. Now every person for an entire generation is enamored <laughs> with this. <laughs> right. That's right. right. That's right. <laughs> and and this is such a new art form too that it's hard to tell what it's going to be worth. I mean, I know I've seen people. I've even had people offer me ridiculous amounts of money for pieces of my personal collection. Right. Some of them I let go of. That cool to me. And others I was like, you know, no. I mean, I've had people offer me up to three to four times what I paid on some stuff just because it's that artist and it's his piece from 10 years ago. Exactly. And it's just now getting to that point to where you're just now learning who Chaz is and who Jason Lee is. And, and Cuba and all yeah, of those guys. Yeah, Banjo and, you know, Mike Fro and all the old school guys, mm-hmm. you know, they're kind of almost the godfathers of yeah, those, the modern the pipe making before the movement. Tubas and all those right, guys. Right, right. Um, I think it'd be really cool if we could, you know, somehow convince the curators of the Denver Art Museum that this is a relative and you know local and community based hugely art. local now exactly and I think if we could find a receptive audience there's that'd be great to have a show there with the Colorado Project oh definitely and I think you guys you guys and us guys over here the guys and the girls would probably be the best you know ambassadors to convince them. Yeah. And I would the other shop who should not be named <laughs> should not have Peggy. anything to Peggy like. <laughs> no words should <laughs> be exchanged. Peggy like it. <laughs> but uh, one other like thing. A caterpillar. <laughs> <laughs> one other thing. Speaking of the Colorado Project, uh, we are doing an event with them uh, coming up. Uh, I'm pretty sure the date is set in stone for June seventh. Uh, we'll know for sure as it gets a little closer. Uh, but I'm we're sure it's set in stone, but we'll know for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I don't know, 100%. But, uh, Peggy, do you know? Sand stone. <laughs> it's we're bringing the uh, degenerate art film to Denver to this air at the Oriental Theater. Oh, that's uh, the degenerative art film. I've heard yeah. about that. Yeah, so Marble Slingers. Yeah, produced by Marble Slinger. He created it, and it... It was a great film. We got to see it in Vegas uh, back in March, and it was phenomenal. It went through a lot of the old history of uh, modern pipe making. Nice. And really gives you the basis of where it came from. And then just a small glimpse of what it is today towards the end. So I think that means he's going to be making So you'll have films. a film That's premiere fantastic. coming up in June. Yeah, at right. the Oriental Theater. We'll make sure that we keep uh, keep you guys posted on that. Um, tell us if people want to run out and buy this because they're going to. Tomorrow, stores, <laughs> locations, <laughs> hours. Uh, all this stuff was <coughs> brought from the Colfax location. Uh, we have other stuff from the collection. This is about half of it. <coughs> half goes to the Walnut Store, half goes to Colfax. So one of these pieces specifically would be at 6091 Colfax Avenue. 
uh, out in Lakewood, open from uh, 10 to 8. Uh, you can also stop by Walnut Store and see a lot of the same, uh, very similar products from the same artists. Uh, 2615 Walnut Street in Denver, right next to MMD. Yay! <laughs> and y'all are 11 to 8, right? We're 11 to 8 right now. Excellent. Well, thank you guys so much. No one and knows about us. Come by and spread <laughs> the word that we're this here. Wonderful. Well, all the patients at MMD feel like they're, they are getting a sneak peek because they are the first ones to pop in the store. It's wonderful. Exactly. <laughs> um, and you guys will be back that first week of June to bring us more amazing pieces. Thank you for bringing the slime. I love it. I love it. I just think it's we the coolest color. We still have a couple other things to talk about. Okay. I'm sure how cool that is before she just dismisses our day. It's not slime, but it's, it's not Oh, my gosh. Anyway, oh, wow. I'm going to start with some of the people over here. These are Millefiori uh, pieces on Rap and Rake that uh, a fellow by the name of Jerry Kelly makes. Millefiori? Is that... Tiny flower. It's what the I small little images. It's an Italian word. <laughs> it's a, I like mushroom, It's yeah. a ancient Milan slash Venetian. You know. A Venetian and Milanese lace. That's where it comes from. I know a lot of really random stuff. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> These are a lot more a of an old way school to stack style. Color in a pattern, pull it down, and create these little slivers of. So that's a pretty advanced technique. You have to. Uh, hey, Deadhead, this one's full of Grateful Dead, dead and Bears. Who's nice. not a Deadhead? <laughs> I am. <laughs> that one. Uh, you. Every time I go to a bar, especially Castleman's, and there's older men there and they see my back tattoo, they're all like, oh, that's such a great tattoo, man. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and then they're, like, they're like, let me show you mine. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm good it things. depends where it is. <laughs> you got a light and gold on mine. It fell off. I got the image. I'm good. Um, so, yeah got to yeah. steal your face where I can steal your face. Uh, oh. <laughs> That's tomorrow night. <laughs> so, the people a preview. The people a preview. It's great. Yep, yeah, tomorrow night. huge carbs on these pipes. I want this one. You want this one. Don't Just while they're going no, through no, glass, no, I'll go ahead and <laughs> give the audience a kind of preview of what's going on. Uh, tomorrow is Sex Pot Radio with December and Jenny. Do we know what they're talking about yet? <laughs> Do we ever know what they're talking about? <laughs> well, uh, my guess is something about sex and something about pot. So, anyways, oh, any way about it, it'll be entertaining. And then on Wednesday, we have the Thunderdome with uh, Mr. Pantalones Verdes, Scott Green, for <laughs> all of those out there who don't know him by that name. And <laughs> also Crunchy, J.P. Crunchington, amazing, amazing cook. Thursday is Overgrow the Radio and Cannabis Health News Magazine. Um, both of those should be really interesting because by that time we will have gone through those hearings for those bills. So if you aren't really keen on going down to the courthouse yourself, stay tuned and they'll sh for sure give you an update. Uh, and next week with Georgia and Amy in The Cure, we're going to be talking about a patient story from one of our dear, dear friends, Dina who has been living with AIDS for mm -hmm. about 17 years now and a variety of other complications that have arisen from that um, access. And she's a really, really good patient advocate. She does a lot of grassroots work. So if you want to learn more, please feel free to reach out to her. Absolutely. Last words, Janonymous. Live long and prosper. <laughs> yeah, but you got to do that one. <laughs> I think that's been done before. <laughs> 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 well, thank you guys so much. Um, Paul and John from Mad Hatter's Smoke Shop, their location in Lakewood on Colfax. You know, just this side of Casa Bonita. So if you're on your way to get some really bad food and watch some cliff diving, make sure you stop in and get your glass pieces. <laughs> um, or if you're heading to MMD of Colorado, stop in next door <laughs> at their Walnut location. Um, thanks to our producer, Chris Custer, and our newsman, Warren Edson. Uh, uh, and I, I just wanted to make a real quick aside. Chris gave great testimony on, what was it, Friday? Thursday. Thursday. Really, really good. So he's out there doing a lot of stuff. So please give Thank him a you. little pat on the back, our community that listens and stays involved. So High five. High five. Uh, <laughs> good work. <laughs> but um, thank you for tuning in. And we will be back next week. And please visit Miss Georgia and the boys over at Mad Hatters. Absolutely. Good night, Maxi Pad. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Are you a runner? Are you a runner who supports marijuana legalization? Run on Grass is a group of athletes actively seeking to change our marijuana laws. We speak the truth about cannabis, bringing the message through our feet to new ears. Check out runongrass.com to find out more about us, our events, and how to join up or how to sponsor a runner. If you're in the Denver area, please join us for runs or start a group in your area. Running not your thing? Any sport can do it on Grass. Runongrass.com. Are you a medical marijuana patient or interested in finding out how to become one? Contact Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. Conveniently located on Hamden and Tamarack in the Whole Foods parking lot behind Proof of the Pudding, Mile High Wellness offers a wide variety of edibles, hashes, and some of Colorado's top strains. Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. 3525 South Tamarack, Suite 110, on the corner of Hamden and Tamarack. 720-382-8516. Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. Hi, Josh Stanley here from National Geographic's American Weed. I'm here with my brothers, and we've just recently put together a foundation in Colorado to allow for cancer patients and other patients of debilitating conditions to be able to get a hold of cannabis-based oil that's just about free of charge. I've just about had it with seeing sick patients suffer needlessly just because they can't afford the proper medication. That's what the Realm of Caring is going to change. Visit therealmofcaring.com. The website will be complete and up on four. 20 of 2012. But until then, please contact any of us Stanley Brothers directly through email. You can get us at gratefuljosh at hotmail.com. Now come on, Colorado. We need to take care of each other. Join the realm. That's realmofcaring.com. Thank you so much. Let's face it. Rules and regulations are complicated, especially in the field of medical marijuana. Let Medical Marijuana 101 help you get through the compliance process. We can also explain to you your employment requirements, your employees, and your business. But our work doesn't stop there. Our experience in cultivation ranges from the design of grow rooms to the diagnosis and resolution of grow problems. Visit us at www.medicalmarijuana101.com or call 303-388-7706. That's 303-388-7706. California's Attorney General has determined that the Repeal Cannabis Prohibition Act will save hundreds of millions of dollars from our overburdened justice system while creating hundreds of millions in new tax revenues from new sustainable jobs and industries that are friendly to our environment. But we can't do it without your help. We are seeking your donations to get on the ballot. Please go to repealcannabisprohibition.org to learn more about how you can help. It's time to end the war on cannabis in Hemp, California. It's time to end the madness. Paid for by Sensible California's Incorporated. The law offices of Vets and Maintenance Mats provide criminal defense, medical marijuana defense, and advice about setting up and running medical marijuana centers, optional premises, cultivation operations, and infused product manufacturing businesses throughout Colorado. With offices in Denver and Aspen, we can offer assistance throughout the entire state of Colorado. Give us a call at 303-831-8188. That's 303-831-8188. Or visit us online at warrenetson.com. I'm Gary Johnson, and you're listening to iCannabis Radio, and I want to say, talk it up, Colorado. Colorado. 